<sighs> I mean, that went as about, about as well as expected. Welcome to Tattoo Tabletop. My name is James, and as you can hear in my voice, I've just come back from my very first RTT. So, we went through the list last week and we covered a little bit of uh, what I was thinking in the old noggin. Um, and I would like to say, first off, for all the people that uh, commented in the previous video with corrections to uh, rules, battle plans, stuff like that, I actually really appreciate that. Uh, like I said, that was my very first game of fourth edition i'm still piecing it together i've got the general's handbook now i think we're going to really start diving in a lot more but i mean that was great constructive criticism i absolutely appreciate so thank you for uh for that but let's talk about the games how did we get along so our very first game we went into daughters of Cain. now i've only played daughters of Cain once or twice and that was really in the previous edition I really hadn't looked that closely at what their index had been brought for them, and uh, they brought the heat. Holy hell. That was a glass cannon that I did not see coming. Um, at the end of it, he ended up just running straight into me. He got advanced and charge, he got plus one damage, and he cleared my first unit of ghouls. He killed my arch region right away. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are, you know, more experienced Black Street of Courts players, and it's been very apparent that if you lose your support characters, the noble deeds go out the window, your casting goes out the window. That was one thing I found out very soon, is just having Usheron and having the Arch Region was a decent amount of cast, but it probably wasn't enough. Um, just because those once those two went down, we lost our deranged transformation. We lost a lot of the gas that makes flesh eater courts really work. Um, but it was a great game, great opponent. Me and him have had some real nail biters, except for that one because he steamrolled me. Um, but he's a great opponent. I couldn't be mad about it. He made some dang nice charges and one main mechanic stood out to me right away after the first game. I was you know, he had moved within 18. I had the CP. I should have spent it to make Usheron, make the Shadow Queen strike on her bow snakes, or on her, not her bow snakes, her combat snakes. I should have made that happen. Again, first RTT, still figuring stuff out, but overall, great learning experience, but we were down game one. The second game, we went into the Caradron Overlords. Um, and it was, I believe, you know what? This is something I should write down. Hold, hold, hold that thought. There we go. Write it down. It's in the books somewhere. Lost it somewhere. All right. So, <clears throat> just to recap. First game score: Daughter of Cain, forty-five. Flesh Air Court, seventeen. So, like I said, he he helps me. He Whoop my butt. Second game: KO. We got more. Uh, of our uh, actual battle formation, we managed to get the ghoul patrol to actually work a lot better. We had a few instances where we were able to use the double activation where I had my 40 block of ghouls run into a bunch of his stuff, and then I had my 20 block run into stuff and be able to actually activate both. One of the big plays that I had is he took Seize the Center as his very first objective, and he moved his frigate, he moved Brock, uh, Brock in, and he moved some Sky Wardens in. And he's like, ah, you know, because he had wounded Usheron with some shooting. And then he's like, ah, I'm not going to charge. I'll just hold the objective here. I'm like, you might not charge, but I'm gonna. And so I spent the two CP, charged him in. And I managed to keep the Sky Wardens out because I believe they have an anti-monster thing. I'm not 100% sure, so let me know down in the comments. Um, but I managed to keep them out based on my placement. But even better, on my Shroud Cage fragment rolls, I rolled over Brock because he's all I had to do was roll over two. And then I rolled a six and I strike last the frigate, which was awesome. It was hilarious. And so I just tried to bonk the crap out of them. We sure missed a couple hits, but we did some serious damage. Three up saves are nothing to laugh at, for sure. Especially for flesh eater courts where, you know, your rend is really not that high and, you know, Ushron's the one source of minus two that I've seen so far. Uh, but there's probably a combo I'm missing again. Let me know now in the comments down below. Eventually, it started taking away. I managed to, and as it was moving in, 
um, because it was the battle plan that uh, the objectives start on the corners and they make their way in. I believe it is the the device. The oh, the vice. That's right. It was it was the vice because all of us were joking. Yeah, device. You don't like the vice, but I got really bad humor, and for that I am sorry. Actually, I'm not. Surprised. In the end, we ended up running away with it. Uh, it was 42 to 20, Flesh Eater Court's victory. So after round two, it was one and one. There were chances, there were possibilities, and we saw them ahead of us. And then the pairings came out. Last but not least, we fought the Lumineth Realm Lords against my buddy Jackson. In our local community, I have known Jackson to play one primary army, I have known him to play Lumineth, and I have known him to play Lumineth very well, including running GTs, running RGTs, easy peasy. And, you know, I'd been talking to him through the event, and he's just like, man, I lost my first game because I forgot to do this casting that needed to happen. He had so much abilities, so many things, and it, like, I knew going into the game that it was going to be a tough sell, it was going to be a tough fight, regardless. Myself enough. Oh my god. Oh my god. It hurts so much. Uh, that's and no techless, no nothing. He had, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know the actual names of the models. I'm sure they're very elegant and beautiful, but he calls them foxes and kangaroos. So he had the mobile kangaroo units. Their move, shoot, and move hurt so badly. I, I took first turn because I managed to drop first. We were both three regiments. And I thought maybe I could put enough pressure on early on to just like get close, try and make him deal with some stuff. I know that he has the firepower. I know that he can do it. But I just want maybe if I can get things over there, get him closer, maybe we can help ourselves out. Granted, it was a long deployment edge, which was not guard, long deployment, which was not great. Um, but maybe, just maybe. And then at the end of my hero phase, he manifested a crown spine. And it was with, I believe he has like an artifact or an ability that allows him to actually just auto cast eight, auto cast the crown, like, yeah, the crown spine incarnate. And uh, he put that right on the middle. And uh, yep, I had to deal with that. And then it went to his turn. And on his turn, he took out Usheron with all of his shooting. He took out my arch region with all of his shooting. Uh, and left my ghouls relatively untouched, but yeah, as you all probably know, uh, Flesh Eater Quartz without casters, without aberrants, starts to go down aggressively. I still had Gormane sitting on the Bone Throne, but not much you could do there. It was a whopping 40 to 6. I got 6 points. That, uh, that hurt a little bit. But... Again, Jackson was a great opponent, so, and uh, he is a fantastic player. I cannot be upset about that. I enjoy my Age of Sigmar. I play, I pray to play a good amount. I've definitely dabbled into the hobby side. You know, you, for anyone who's seen my past videos, you've seen the giant effing wall I have in that room over there. Uh, I love these models. I love this game, but Jackson has put in the work. He's an incredible opponent, so his victory was absolutely well earned. Recap. How do we feel with the Flesh Eater Quartz? I could see the Flesh Eater Quartz still making some decent plays. Um, I don't think, I know that they were kind of toned down a pinch in terms of like replacement units not being able to go back to, you know, the full unit because it wasn't counting as the same thing. But they touched that with all the other armies. I think that's fair. That's totally fine. Um, I can absolutely see, as uh, Common Sense suggested, looking at Lords of the Manor because then you're spending your Noble Deed points and you're returning more models, which is, I think, really good. I think ghouls still absolutely have a place. I've seen a lot of lists that have just been bringing pure crypt guard. Um, I still see a good use for for ghouls. I think the crit auto wound is a very good ability because just pure stacking of dice. I mean, a forty block of mine. You know, if you're popping off feeding frenzy, that's a hundred and twenty dice. I don't have the hands for a hundred and twenty, even the little small chessex. Six mil, six millimeter dice. I, you know, you just you just throw them up in your shirt and just bleh, you just throw them out there and roll them everywhere. It's a good time, and then you you know spend forever like sorting and picking through everything. And oh, uh, these ones missed, and these ones are. But you can also pretty easily with direct transformation and all on attack get them to threes and threes. 
And as long as they're chilling around an Aberrant or a Quartier or somewhere, you know, you're getting minus one rend. And sometimes minus one is really all you need because pure weight of dice, you're going to get through things. Um, so if I was going to pick my MVPs, it would be somewhere between the Ghouls and Usheron. I mean, Usheron is such a beast of a model. He does so much good work. Um, and his Shroud Cage Fragment is incredible. His spell is incredible to pick out monsters or pick out heroes and make them hit other things that they're hanging around, which is huge. Um, he did a lot of good stuff and, you know, he is a beefy, he's a beefy boy to try and take down. But there was also a few times where he was a bit of a crutch because he is, as you can very happy to see, on a very, very large base. So trying to make sure that you're placing him correctly and maneuvering him around the battlefield is very important. And there were a few times where I felt like I probably dropped the ball there. Again, first go of it. Yeah, you can hear the voice. I was talking plenty. Here, let's, let's, let's do this for fun. Oh, yeah. That's, that's how you get this. You just go to an RTT, you know, a nerd RTT, and you just get one of these voices. But I did really like my ghouls. I think the ghouls were really a lot of fun. Uh, the other failing that I'd have is I really didn't use uh, my manifestations all that often. Um, I definitely do not particularly care for the change to the chalice. Obviously before it was absolutely kind of busted for what it did, um, but manipulating the objective score to a max of six, I could see that being good or better, but I mean, I feel like there's a lot that has to go on for it to really work because it maxes out at six and if you're feeding it by killing things within six, I know, I think it can be friendly or enemy. So, I mean, you can use the enemy's deaths to like ramp it up, but if you're already killing the enemy, then why do you need the chalice? And also, if the enemy's killing you, and then you're just putting six back, like that's, uh, I, I don't know, I can see where it would work, but for me, it was kind of meh. Crypt Guard, it didn't really do much for me, but I also just left them guarding, I left them guarding Gourmet, just to make sure that he didn't, uh, he didn't get absolutely buggered. Didn't really use the horses. I think that's the one thing I've got to figure out is I've got to figure out the manifestations for sure. I think that's where, how everyone felt leaving the event is manifestations are a huge, huge new part of the game. I think there's a lot of people that are going to anticipate that they're going to get touched um, or adjusted in some way because there have been, I know I've seen the feedback online where people were like manifestations were a bit too much or there was a bit too much power involved in them and stuff like that. Um, I know the Honest War Gamer had talked about it, Rob had talked about it and he had offered up some suggestions for fixes. I kind of liked the suggestion that he had where one of the suggestions he offered was that manifestations can be summoned once. Uh, that way you can keep the points free so that they, you know, you know, you can still include them in your army, they're built in, but it also forces you to be more tactical in when you summon your manifestations, when you actually bring them onto the field, because otherwise, you know, right now, especially they're just you know, the Kron's fine incarnate alone, you know, he's, granted he's only got 12, 12 wounds, but he's an Usheron sized base. He's just popping up every time, like, oh, it's my opponent's turn? Cool. Here he is. Block you. Okay, well, I'm going to kill him. All right, you spend your time killing him, unbinding him, whatever. And he's a bigger casting role. So when he does go off, it's, you know, you got to make a significant casting role and you get rid of him and then boom, you're back on my turn. It's just, it's a bit much. So I can kind of see where people have their criticism. Again, I'm in no particular place. I'm still figuring this stuff out. Hey, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Based on your couple, your first uh, fourth edition games, let me know how you feel about the manifestations. Are they too powerful? Are they too plenty? Let me know what you think. But overall, in review, great event. I love my community uh, here in Minnesota for AOS. We are extremely friendly. I love that everyone went into the RTT with no ego like honestly no ego everyone we were all figuring this all out together even some of the guys that are what i would consider some of the best players uh in our community we're still kind of piecing together stuff the interactions how this worked how this worked and so it was all in all just a really wholesome event where everyone was playing their games having fun didn't matter what you got for the score you didn't feel as bad um you didn't feel bad but if you got like even on the last game like i got absolutely like open hand slapped across the face but i didn't feel bad because again he's an incredible opponent he's a very good player and also i just had fun it's a fun time it's a fun event i know i was still figuring stuff out so can't really be that mad but hey again thank you for Everyone who chimed in on the last video, who, you know, added feedback, criticism, I absolutely thank you for that. That's actually very, very helpful. 
Uh, and it was awesome that you all watched that. That was, I did not expect that. So that was very fantastic to see. I hope you like this video. And again, if you like my videos, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever, you know what to do. I really appreciate it. It's really awesome. I've been doing this channel as a bit of a, a fun thing and it's grown a lot more than I ever thought it would be. So again, thank you all very much. But in between now and the next time you see me, please, for the love of God, go paint something.